Well, the nights are drawing in and the leaves are turning brown. Log fires are roaring into life and the first frosts of winter start to bite. For most of the Northern Hemisphere, that means the growing season comes to an end. It's great to have all the fresh fruit and veg, but the key thing that I really struggle without is fresh herbs. I love them in my food, but come winter, I have to accept that it'll be spring before I can grow fresh herbs again. You haven't watched this channel before, have you? I bring you my latest creation, the Herbus S20 Pro X Ultra. I think that was perfectly understated and appropriate introduction for the herb planter. Here's the Herbus S20 Herb Vault. This is designed to be a free 3D printed modular herb growing system that will provide an unlimited supply of tasty herbs all year round. And for hundreds of times less than all those expensive supermarket herbs. This smart planter has lots of modular options to accommodate every style, from a fully automated state with smart lighting and watering, to using only gravity and sunlight and human hands and everything in between. As I know that home gardeners range from those of you who love to tend your plants every hour of the day manually, to those of us who are somewhat more neglectful and leave their plants to die and maybe are in need of any piece of help that technology can offer. Moving on. In short, you can pick and choose the elements that you like based on your interests, skills and tools. There are three main growing areas. The germination zone for seedlings to establish, the grow zone to develop plants to maturity and then there's the overflow station for transplanting out any excess herbage. They are pretty self-explanatory, but this allows me to have a continual supply of new herb pods at any time. I can plant cuttings or seeds down here. Then once they're ready to transplant, I can move them up to this zone where they go into larger pots and grow to cropping size. If I'm struggling to eat enough and they're growing too big, I can also transplant them to the overflow station. This is also handy for spring because I can move this outside for hardening off plants that are ready to be out in the open. I've designed these custom planters that tackle a few annoyances. They're interchangeable, so moving pods from each area is as simple as this. But also, when it's time to transplant into a larger pot, you can just pop the plants out as they have these removable bottoms. Everything, of course, is Gridfinity compatible, which allows really elegant modularity. They have self-contained watering holes, so you just drop them in and everything is taken care of. I've laser cut these plant labels, which both fit the pot and also can be pulled out and stuck into the soil when you plant them out. The transparent slot in these pots is great as it lets me see the root development of the plants so I can tell when it's time to transplant. Indeed, I've added a little measurement gauge so that I can tell precisely how deep the roots have grown. As I said, this whole system can be manually maintained, but you can also use smart solutions. I've created these docking bays at the back so you can drop in whatever you want. In this side, I've made it the perfect size for the Elecro Grow Cube that Elecro sent me to test a while back. This handles pumping water, moisture sensing, and a whole load of other things. 
I'll add a link to this in the description if anyone wants a super simple plant system. It's actually a pretty amazing gadget that integrates with Home Assistant and so much more. So you'll see this featuring in future. I've created this see-through design with acrylic that allows in the light. It's clear at the back as well, so you can just stick this whole thing near a window and the plants can bathe in the natural sunlight. But inside, I've also got the option of these embedded shelves that have full spectrum grow LEDs built into them, which gives the plants optimum lighting in all seasons. I'll be honest, I love the taste of freshly grown herbs and veg, but I'm not that great at the maintenance and knowing which herbs need more water and which prefer drier conditions. Well, the grow cube senses moisture levels and automatically tops up these reservoirs below each pot. What's even cooler is that in the app, they have over 3000 plants and the perfect soil moisture for each. So it can deliver the perfect amount of water depending on the plant. It also lets you know when it needs filling up with a little notification. And it integrates with Home Assistant. Yes. I should add that whilst most modern 3D printers create watertight prints with a few walls of thickness, I've made sure that the Herbus is extra, extra watertight by spraying it with a clear coat to totally seal things. Temperature and humidity can be carefully controlled via various vents and I can add the ability to open and shut these easily in future if I need to. I don't see any need for a heater as there will be enough heat from the room and the LED lights, but there's a strong chance it'll get very toasty on a sunny day. So these vents are also designed ready to fit a fan if I needed one. I've also taken the opportunity to include Apollo Automation's latest plant moisture sensor to the overflow station. All Home Assistant integrated, this monitors the air temperature, humidity, UV levels and moisture. Their battery version will be great because I can move it outside with the plants in spring and continue monitoring. I'm going to use it in my farm bod. This will be super handy in spring for monitoring ground temperatures for starting the planting. Word of warning though, I think they're getting swamped with demand, so be quick if you're interested. In terms of design, well, as this is a 3D printed solution, you can super easily duplicate or extend or modify everything. But I've done almost all the styling using Xtool lasers, who I need to do a full video about at some point, because frankly, I think they're awesome. And a laser cutter is just the perfect pairing for a 3D printer. They've got that sub millimeter precision that you get with a 3D printer and they enable you to take your plastic 3D prints to another level by incorporating other materials and knowing everything will fit together perfectly. I carved this copper coin using the fiber laser, which is able to engrave at different depths using depth maps, which is very cool. And I also used it to cut the walnut inserts. I cut the copper vinyl with the blade on my M1 Ultra and that sits perfectly in the laser engravings. I cut the acrylic with its rounded corners to perfectly fit into the 3D printed door and I even etched the acrylic with a laser at the end. I've long been a light burn user for laser cutting, but Xtools free software is becoming pretty hard to beat. Actually, I'd give a shout out to AI Make, which is a new generative AI within Xtools range that I'm using more and more. Think of it as a kind of chat GPT for makers. It's very cool and free to try out. It's designed with laser cutting in mind, so all the complicated prompts that you normally have to develop and the heavy post-processing that you get involved in just disappears. As an example, I generated this copper insert design using it just type a few keywords and then you just play around. And there's loads of places that you can use this. I also generated the organic pattern on the back window, also in AI Make. Two features that I'd really call out that aren't super obvious. Firstly, it works really well with generating text within an image. And this is notoriously difficult with most AIs, like even the best AIs in the world at the moment. And that's pretty impressive. 
I've had very few fails with it. For example, I made the logo on this t-shirt that I'm wearing in minutes and the text worked out beautifully from the outset. Secondly, it handles depth maps super well. Again, these are really hard to achieve. Just try asking Midjourney or ChatGPT to do this and you'll see it generates pretty poor results. This isn't easy to achieve technically. So the sheer range of customized models that Excel will have is really good for anyone dealing with designs. It's really nice to have an AI tool appearing that's just more focused on vectorized designs like this. So if you have a cricket or you like laser cutting or do anything with vectors, give this a go or else. I've tried Adobe Illustrator's generative AI as well. And you obviously need to pay lots more for that, but it's actually pretty poor for anything other than cartoons. But this one seems really well trained, so produces great images quickly. Just have a poke around, it's free to try out, and then there is a premium option just like all AI tools. So it's a great place to start. Putting this all together and you end up with an open source smart enabled home planter that you can monitor from anywhere that looks after itself. Now, I'm going to test this system out for a month or two and get some ideas from my Patreon gang in the Git Discord channel. And then we can release a version of this for everyone for free and open source. And of course, anyone that's desperate to join in, just comment below and I can share the files in their beta format. But more importantly, I want to know what extra features I've missed. There's such a world of different sizes, dimensions, growing media and plant types that it can be dizzying. I'd like to design some siphon gravity fed water planters that you can just attach a bottle upside down to and it'll water things. I'd also like to make lots of different sizes and styles of pots too. Oh, and my head just exploded when I discovered the Elecro Grow Cube can refill itself from an external water reservoir as well. Switchbot's humidifier can be filled by the S10. Oh yes, you know where I'm going with that. But let me know below if you can think of any other components or features that would be cool to add. And I'll look to build loads of cool extra bits. And then we can properly open source smart plant maintenance forever. I will release the laser cutting designs too, but if you have a laser cutter, you can just use the inserts to apply your own personalized designs that are unique to you. Oh, and Patreons and YouTube members, I'll add the extra video with even more details and chat and thoughts for you in the next few days, so watch out for that. As always, I have some questions and more ideas for you. Apart from that, I'll keep you posted on the Herbus and catch you later, folks. Do check out AI Make if you basically make anything, because it's not just handy for laser cutterers. Yeah, that is a word. Also have a nose at some of these smart plant devices. I'll add links to everything in the description. And here's a few more shots of him in action. And yeah, the smoke was necessary. <laughs>